Hi guys, Squirrel here, and welcome to a preview look at American Truck Simulator Heavy Haul DLC coming soon. Notice on the front of my truck we've got an oversized load that comes with the Heavy Haul DLC. Notice also we've got flashing beacons on top, that's going to be built into the base game. And as we move further back here, this is one of the trailers that comes with the Heavy Haul DLC. This particular trailer has not one, not two, but three articulation points on the trailer. It's built quite differently to the Euro Truck Simulator Heavy Haul trailers. They're quite different, and it also paves the way for multiple articulation points and therefore double trailers. Let's take a look what's inside the Heavy Haul DLC. Now if you're familiar with the Euro Truck Simulator Heavy Haul, you'll be more than used to the fact that the trailers often have a steerable rear axle, which shortens the turning circle of the trailer. This is not the case with the ATS Heavy Haul. With the ATS stuff, the trailers are very, very long, as you can see here. And what you actually have is you have a, a dolly here, which is a separate mini trailer, which has an articulation point there on the fifth wheel. And then this dolly here has two axles on the back, the actual trailer with the weight on sits on another fifth wheel, which goes into that dolly. And then at the back, some, on some of the trailers, not all of them, you'll also have an extended trailer, which has a third articulation point right there. What that gives you is a very, very long trailer and a real problem when it comes to cornering. You often find yourself having to do very wide turns, as I'll demonstrate shortly. Now, the other thing to pay attention, I know this is a really small thing, but look at these flags on the back. Watch what happens as I start to pick up speed. The flags move! <laughs> it's a really small thing, but the flags on the back just start flapping away as you drive. I love that. Anyway, so watch what happens when I turn. I'm going to have to swing right out here, and then you'll see the actual articulation in action. So I'm going to stay wide. Now you can see what's happening now. Unlike the ETS stuff, this is not following me around the corner. This is actually cutting off quite sharply. Even when I'm taking a full swing. You can see the separate dolly trailer working. You can see the rear trailer at the back go working. It's doable though. It's completely doable. But it's something to watch out for. Now this presents a slight problem with the AI vehicles. At the moment they've not been tuned from what I can tell. So they're not really leaving you any extra leg room. Uh, as you make these turns. So that's one thing definitely to watch out for. So let's have a look at the trailers that come in the Heavy Haul DLC. Without the Heavy Haul DLC, this is what you're going to have as the heaviest trailer short of using a mod, and that's the low boy trailer with the bulldozer on the back. That comes in at 20 tons. If you drop down the list and go for the low boy 55L, this stuff is what comes in the Heavy Haul DLC. This is the lightest of all of the trailers. This is 25 tons. This is a piece of farming equipment. And you can see the trailer configuration has the dolly with two axles on it. And the actual flatbed has three axles on it. I'm going to call this two and two by three. There are six trailers in this configuration and we'll go through them now. So it starts off with the, cr the crawler tractor at 25 tons. Next up from that is the cable reel, which comes in at 29 tons. Up from that is the all-terrain crane, which comes in at 35 tons. Up from that is the bulldozer. Uh, the bulldozer is a larger version of the one that is on the standard uh, trailer. This one comes in at 40 tons, exactly the same configuration of trailer. Two axles on the front, three axles on the back. Next up from that is the scraper. The scraper is a very large piece of machinery. Uh, this one weighs 40 tons. Uh, but again, it's on the same platform as the others. And finally, in this 2x3 configuration, we have the lift truck chassis, which is this one here. Uh, and this one comes in at 42 tons. You can see they're all tied down. They all have oversized load on the back. They all have the flags. And they're all on a two-axle dolly with a three-axle flatbed. Now, moving up from this, there are three other trailers. And they're on a different configuration, as you'll see now. The lightest is the lift truck. The lift truck comes in at 33 tons, and you'll see the difference. It's essentially a uh, two-axle dolly on the front, a two-axle 
uh, flatbed, low rider flatbed, and a two axle dolly on the back there. All of these trailers have the extra dolly on the back. Now this is the lightest, like I say, this is 33 tons. Moving up from this, we have the milling machine. The milling machine comes in at 43 tons, I think it was, the four, uh, this one. 43 tons, this is one that you just saw. This is a monstrous piece of equipment, but it's not the biggest, well, not the heaviest. I'd say this is probably the bulkiest, but the heaviest by far is the transformer, which comes in at a whopping 55 tons. It may not look much, but this thing is seriously heavy, 55 tons. Uh, probably best to take the 600 brake engine if you're going to haul this thing, because this will catch you out up the hills. Speaking of the engines, let's have a quick look at the actual truck itself. Now, if you've played the Euro Truck Simulator Heavy All DLC, you'll be aware that when the DLC came out, there was a change to the game uh, that gave some of the trucks more axles. We also brought in this truck analysis window so that we can see how suitable a particular truck is to heavy hauling. Now, it's the same with American Truck Sim, except there aren't really any changes to the trucks. The axles remain the same. The only thing extra I've noted is the beacons and the oversized load on the front here. But, nevertheless, we still have the truck analysis window. And it's important to make sure that your truck is configured for hauling this heavy stuff. Well, how do you go about doing that? So what you want to be looking for in the, uh, the chassis configuration is the number of powered axles. You don't want any of these 6x2s, mid-lift or otherwise. What you're actually looking for is a 6x4. The 6x4 gives you the extra powered axle, as you can see here. As soon as I click that, I have two powered axles and my heavy cargo bar suddenly shoots up. It doesn't matter if you go for the longer version. All that matters is whether it has two powered axles or not. Don't be choosing mid-lift or anything else. 6x2s, just go for the 6x4 and get those powered axles. That will get the heavy cargo bar up. Next is the engine. Now with the engine, what matters is not the brake horsepower at all. What actually matters is the torque. That's the second number here. 1350 pounds foot or 1830 newton meters. The higher this number, basically, the better it is for hauling, the better it can pull. So here we have an 1830 newton meters or 1350. If we move down and go for a 1850 with 2500, you'll watch the heavy cargo bar on the right. It goes up. The normal cargo bar comes down. Why is that? Well, it's not that the truck or this engine can't haul normal cargo. It's not that at all. It's a suitability bar. This is saying this engine is very good or more purposeful for heavy cargo because it can pull so much. Using this on normal cargo is complete overkill. If you scroll all the way down and pick the, the heaviest one, let's say this one here, 2,779 newton meters of torque, if you click between the two, notice that the bar is not moving, even though there's a 25 horsepower difference. Why is it not moving? Well, there's no difference in the torque. This can still pull just as well as that one. It's just rated at a higher brake horsepower. The important thing is to go for a truck which has the most torque that you can possibly buy. That may be dependent on your level within the game. If you're not of a high level, you won't see some of these engines. Now, the final piece in this jigsaw is the transmission. If you click to transmission, how do, we, how do we max this bar out? What are we looking for? Well, funnily enough, you might think, oh, we just need more gears. Mm, no, that's not the case. More gears give you more options. That's a great thing. But a couple of the most important factors are the first gear ratio and whether it has a retarder or not. So, for example, if we go down here to this Allison 10 speed, you click on this, notice the first gear ratio is 7.4. That's a very low ratio gear. And also, this thing has no retarder on it, which makes it pretty unsuitable for heavy cargo. If we take this 10 speed and we'll just go with an Eaton Fuller version, notice the main difference is the gear ratio here. Ratio 7.4 to 0.46. This one, 15.42 to 1.0. So if you click on this, you have a much higher first gear ratio. That lets you heavy haul. Basically, if you're stuck on a slope, on a standing start on a slope, let's say a, a ramp coming up onto a highway, the first gear is what matters. You need a very high ratio to get that thing moving. That's why the heavy cargo bar suddenly jumps up. That's not the end of the story, though. Remember I said about the retarder? So here's a 10-speed Eaton, and there's also a 10-speed with a retarder here. It's exactly the same ratio, but when you click on it, boom, it puts the bar even more up because it has a retarder. That allows you to slow down the weight going down a hill. When you take these trailers, 
there's a huge amount of energy and momentum behind you. When you start to go down a hill, you need a way of braking that. You can't just stomp on the brakes, you'll overheat the brakes. You need a retarder to slow you down. And that's why a, a transmission with a retarder is almost essential when it comes to this kind of thing. There's also engine braking as well, don't forget. A lot of, uh, a lot of trucks in America will use engine braking, like a jake brake and that kind of thing. But in this analysis window, it's the retarder that matters, uh, on the transmission at least. Right, so one final point I want to show you is the drop-off points, the parking points. With multiple articulation trailers, they're very difficult things to reverse. In particular, this one is very difficult to reverse because there's a very long trailer, and then on the back is a very short trailer. And what that means is, as the whole thing starts to turn, that rear trailer is very difficult for me to control, and that's basically the thing that's pointing the way. The net result is that as I start to reverse my truck, you'll notice that the first dolly starts to become a problem very quickly, and if I want to keep this thing reversing down the road, I have to really start to fight to do so. The whole thing can become a mess very, very quickly. The net result is that reversing these trailers into position is... it's pretty tricky, you know, it's going to take a lot of practice. So what SCS has done is they've made the drop-off points drive-through points. That is to say, you don't need to reverse to put them in. However, that doesn't make them easy, because what you need to do is plan ahead. If you, if you mess up your uh, parking on the way in, your only option is to reverse, and I've just shown you how tricky it can be to reverse. So what you need to do when you're parking these things is assess as you turn up, assess what is going on. Now this is one of the easier ones, uh, which I'll show you. I'll show you a more difficult one in a minute. But with this one, it's the same thing. You need to take a, a wide berth as you go around the first bend, and look at where the parking spot is. You can see we're going to have to weave our way in, and then straighten it up. Now remember, you're not going to get to reverse to straighten it up. That's going to be tricky, so you need to nail this on the way in. So in this particular trailer, I need to keep full left very quickly. Aim for the fence, and then at last minute, I'm going to bring it in. And straighten it off like that. We've got quite a bit of room on this one, so it's not too bad. And that's how you do it. But let me show you a slightly more tricky one. So here we have one of the slightly more trickier drop-off points. Uh, this is the rail export drop-off point. And what makes this slightly more tricky is the space that you get to maneuver into. Now, depending on which way you come at this, uh, you could be looking at a 180 or a slalom. Let me show you what I mean by that. So if you come in this way, you're going to come along the road here and you're going to have to make a right-hand turn and then another right-hand turn and straight into the parking spot. It looks straightforward, but there are a few things about this one that make it slightly more tricky. Alternatively, you could be coming in this way, in which case you're going to make a left turn and then a right turn. The important thing about this drop-off point is positioning. If you just come into here and drive straight towards that, what you'll find is the trailer does not straighten up on time. And then you face with a reversing uh, situation, which is a bit of a mess. So what you want to be doing for this one is positioning yourself as far over the left as you can and making your turn here as late as you can. Now, believe it or not, I've actually seen a heavy haul trailer sat here. And the heavy haul trailer has sat, its front end, its gooseneck has been all the way out here. And it has made this job almost impossible to drop off. Luckily today, we've got a normal trailer here, so we've got plenty of room. Well, let me show you how I get on. Now, do bear in mind, when we do this, I've got the traffic turned on. If I was to turn the traffic on, then what you tend to find is, as I need to go on the other side of the road there, the traffic will come at me, and as I'm on that in the other lane waiting to turn right, the traffic will also come up the inside of me down here, uh, just as I'm about to turn in. So that is one of the things that causes the problem with dropping off these trailers. So normally at this point, for what it's worth, I press F and put the beacons on. Allegedly the AI pays some attention to that. In my experience, it doesn't seem to do that much. But we'll put it on anyway, because it's a feel-good factor. So we'll stay in this lane, and we're going to wait and make our turn as absolutely late as possible. We're even going to use that dirt there. Because we can, it doesn't matter. There are more tricky rail export drop-offs than this. This one's got quite a lot of room. We'll just watch that curb, and we'll keep left all the way over here, we'll make our turn as late as we can, just watching the mirror to make sure what's going on. Trailer's straightened up nicely. So, again, there's nothing in the way here, there's no trailer sticking out. If you have a heavy haul trailer sticking out, this, this drop-off is a nightmare. 
But even so, even with all this room, you can see, if you don't get your positioning right, watch out, Jeff. If you don't get your positioning right, you've still got a problem because look at the trailer. The trailer, unlike the ETS stuff with the steerable axles, it's taken a very long time to straighten up. So we'll keep left as much as we can, give it full chance to straighten up. And then at the end, we're going to come back in and straighten it out. I was quite happy with that drop-off right there. So you can see, if you position yourself correctly, you can make this happen. But it's still by no means easy. But like I say, back there, those trailers, if they were the heavy haul ones, the long ones, this one becomes almost impossible to do. Because in front of you, you have no room to manoeuvre. You've got these concrete bars here. And uh, once, you, once you get to those bars, there's not a lot of room to turn that dolly as you start reversing. Well, that's it from me for the Heavy Haul DLC first look. I hope you enjoyed the video. hope you found it useful. Uh, just to confirm, I don't have a release date and I don't know how much this will cost. You need to watch out on the SCS blog for that information. However, I would expect it to be similarly priced to the ETS2 DLC. That's it from me. Stay safe out on the roads. Take care, guys. Happy trucking.